morning. So I am jumping back into working away on the fairy journals and making these pages useful pages. I've actually gotten quite a bit done, um, but I thought I'd just kind of, you know, have a little kind of make along today and you could make along with me if you're not doing much. So um, let me just grab. So this is like I organized all of the ephemera that I've made for the fairy journals and this looks like a lot right but I have this feeling that it's probably not going to be enough nowhere near enough <laughs> so that's okay I have a lot of work to do um, so right now I'm just trying to find something I can use to cover this up at the bottom here I'm thinking about using this as a pocket and I don't want to cut it off so I'm gonna fold it over and put something fun here because um, I want to cover up this section of text at the bottom here. So we have a few ways to do that. We could paint it, we could stick paper over it, but I have um, been doing that a little bit already and I just now want to start using some ephemera to just cover things up. So here we go. Did I put glue on this side? No, I didn't. I want to though. So I want to seal it up to be a pocket, not a tuck, because it's going toward the inner <clears throat> crease here. So there we go. I want that to just fold as so. Now I need something to make this a little more interesting. Um, and I think I'll use maybe a cluster out of here, I have, or, or something small. That would be very cute. Mm -hmm. or even like a little tag would be cute maybe and yeah, that would be cute I'm gonna use that one so we're starting to get to the fun the fun stage of um actually that's too tall maybe because then it would make the back look awkward hold on of decorating things we're starting to get to be able to use ephemera but I do have I've got two more journals I need to kind of go through I think to make the pages a little more ideal um what's that that's just a little little bitty bob where is the original one that I had right there okay oh that's cute too hmm Yeah, I got lots done yesterday. I didn't want to do like all of that on camera though because it would be boring. Just watching me like cover things up on, you know, it'd be kind of boring probably. I don't want the white to hang over really. Unless I inked it or I stuck something to it, but I don't want to have like a never ending, um, that's cute okay let's do that mm -hmm. yeah so I, I just um, did a bunch of stuff yesterday because it was Sunday and I got to just do a lot of studio work it was good yeah and I'll put this little mushroom here and then I will ink um, I'm feeling very like focused on wanting to just buckle down on these journals though like and get them done I'm also just really enjoying the process though <clears throat> but I am also having a little bit of like I want to move on to the next thing itis <laughs> so um yeah which often strikes me when I make multiple journals at once. I have been working on some other things in the background. I made a bunch of little covers. I think I showed a few of them in one of my last videos, but they are going into storage because we are not starting a new thing until we finish a few things that I have sort of sitting in the banks over here because there are a few projects that have been looming and waiting for me to um, get going on them. We'll just do the same inking around here. 
so today is a work day and I'll be um, working soon enough I am just right now by myself here my family just went to like an outdoor kids thing and um, so I'm just hanging out with my dog I don't know where he is I think he's over on the couch he was just sitting here staring at me um, Right now we have this page to deal with. What I do is I just kind of go through page by page the ones that need to be um, worked on and I just put a little bookmark. So again I think I'm going to work from maybe using pockets on these. Because I have grown tired of covering them in other ways right now. And that's too skinny. That might be cute there. It's a pocket and it's also a little booklet. And then I need something wide that would be a good bottom pocket. That's not tall enough. enough. <laughs> that one will be cute. So this one I'm going to just glue here and here. be a nice little tuck spot and it's cute because it's also a booklet. Oops. And then this one it actually has an envelope at the back but I don't really know that it will matter because it's not going to be floating it's going to be fixed down here. There we go. All right, and now we have this side. <clears throat> so a small pocket would be good here. And then something that goes across maybe as a belly band. And I don't know, oops. Hold on, get that out of the way. I have all these things clipped above my head. Um, and they are just getting in my way. That's too long, but also not wide enough. Let's start at the back here and see what I have that goes sideways. Voila, perfecto. Okay, then I need a little pocket. That's too little. Too big. Hmm. Well, that might be nice. Oh no. Hold on. Oh, it's just upside down. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I like that. So we're just going to glue the sides down of the belly band here. Yeah, I think I'm going to be totally moving through my um, all my ephemera a lot sooner than I even realized. Because as I'm putting it into the journals, I'm reminded of the last time that I made like multiple journals at once and I had this impressive amount of ephemera and then it was not so impressive <laughs> by the end. <laughs> okay, yeah. there we go. Those are just nice and flat. Perfect. Because I didn't want to get too bulky because I have pot I have this on this side so I just want something nice and flat so it's just this is just a piece of scrapbook paper but it's a nice weight it's not like super thin um okay so that one's good so then we find our bookmark okay. Right, this is the next page we have to do with this center page. 
And this is from like a um like a family history kind of book. So I'm thinking about if I could just kind of embellish it. Not necessarily with a pocket or something, but maybe just with something here out of my remaining things to make ephemera out of, like something that would glue down nicely. And use some of those leaves maybe. I could also try to take this apart and use some of that. Let's give that a try because this thing has been haunting me a little bit. It's this really thick like multi-layer thing and I've kept it around because I thought how pretty um, but yeah I'm a little nerve-wracked to try to use it because it's got all this um hot glue stuck on it from where it came from I don't know it was part of a thrift haul I think so let's see if we can do anything with it even if it's just this top piece this is really good glue whatever glue they used it looks like hot glue very very rubbery oh my goodness um all right I'm gonna get medieval on it here <coughs> move our page aside here and just see if I can't separate a couple of the layers with this knife. I'm not going to cut your my fingers, so I'm going to cut away from my fingers. Okay, that pulled up. Mm-hmm. Very, very glued. There's a piece. Okay. One. And I would be happy to get like even one more off if I could. Okay, this is peeling a little easier. These people really went to town on the glue. <laughs> I guess they were using it to make it more 3D, maybe. But I don't want super 3D because it'll just add bulk to the journal. Just kind of slicing away from my fingers here. Moving back and forth slowly as I get through every lump of this glue. Okay, perfect. And if we can peel it off the back, that would be nice. In the land of using things up. <laughs> okay. It's really hard to get this glue off. It's a very good glue. Okay, so then we have built, rebuilt the flower, which is good. Um, that's what I wanted. And then with this one, if I could peel this off, I could actually get another flower out of this. But you know what, I think I'll be happy with just that for now. And then maybe I will take, if I, they're not too glued down, one of these leaves. Oh, they're really glued, holy cow, okay. Let's just set this aside now, that's enough of that. We got one flower, which is what I wanted. So let's close the knife so that nobody gets gouged. Now this I've left as a flip because I like I liked this at the time, but now I feel like I don't really need it. It's not necessary. Um, the other thing is, you know what I could do? As I'm looking here, I like this side better and this can be a built-in tuck spot. So let's do that with this piece. And it covers, it both covers up the text we don't want and um, it's a pretty good flat way to create a pocket. There's just a little bit of text there, which you don't have to, you know, obsess over really. It's so 
something that I do too much, a little bit too much, worrying about every little bit and bob. Chances are, for whomever wants to own these journals, they're going to want to stick some things in themselves, so probably I don't need to worry so much about making every page perfect, but it's just kind of, I don't know, it's still a thing I do. I'd be interested to know for those of you who, um, you know, purchase journals, how do you feel about that? Like, how do you feel about having things a certain way? I might leave favorite things here. That's kind of nice. And then I'll use this leaf down here. And then one more leaf from that torn one. Could I do that? I could. Okay, perfect. I'm actually going to try to get more of this glue off the back here. Holy cow. It's so thick. Truly junk journaling at this point. There we go. All right. Almost, come on. So we'll just put some art glitter on here. Art glitter glue will make everything better here. Just like so. I'm just gonna press it for just a moment so that it can set just because of the bumpiness. My fingers and hands are so painty and gluey because <laughs> I have been working. Okay. Same thing, just hold it for a moment so that the glue can set up. Okay, good. Now, we need to glue this one on. I did a little bit of thrifting over the weekend. We had a nice day. Um, it was Father's Day yesterday. And um, we went to the city of Hamilton. I did a little thrifting. I didn't find much. I actually found another fairy book, which is upstairs in my bag. I forgot to bring it down. And a little, like, nature book. Um, but we went on a really nice walk with the kids and I need to peel that up a little. Um, then we went to this amazing, like amazing ice cream place. It's called A and J ice cream. Um, and they're like really nice people and they make bubble waffles and bubble tea, like bubble waffles are these waffles that are made like a, um, in a bubble shape so they're like you know how usually waffles have like a waffle shape well these ones have like little round bubbles and it's like all these little bubbles and they're so nice and like they serve them with ice cream they also do crepes and ice cream like it's just very yummy and the people are so nice so my husband went in there yesterday to get ice cream for the kids and we had a bubble waffle because you can't not when you're there oh my goodness um and so because it was father's day they actually gave him his whole dessert for free the lovely woman that was working there that owns the place she's so nice um and it really made his day he had a really nice conversation with her and it just really made his day i mean other than getting to hang with the kids and stuff and having a fun a fun day like we often do it was actually just a little special you know a little extra special but I was joking with him because I said you know you're following in your daughter's footsteps at this point everywhere you go you get something for free because you're just so darn cute because that's totally my daughter like I do not understand like my daughter like well she's just really a sweet little soul I, I don't know how else to explain it other than that 
but she really is and I know everyone says that about their kids but like I not that my kids more special than anyone else's but there's something about her that always makes me just kind of dumbfounded and it's how like people seem to be very drawn to like her like just because she she's sort of like um outwardly interested in you like when you meet her she'll she'll ask you your name and she'll you know she'll she'll ask you about whatever you're doing if you have a dog she'll ask to pet your dog and then she'll ask you questions and like you know because she's she's actually very um interested in people and I think that that you know makes people feel like they can relate more to her and then they also feel comfortable talking to us and it's it's nice um so everywhere this kid goes people just want to give her things so I remember like one day and this has always been the way like when she was two years old we were in a thrift store actually and I was just like you know shopping and getting a few things and so you know she was in I think she was in the the cart at the time or she was in her pram I can't remember and this lady out of nowhere came up you know and she's talking to her and it was really sweet like Matilda was laughing my daughter and um <laughs> she said she came back to me with this like big you know teddy bear <clears throat> it was really cute and she said I want to give this to your daughter she said I, I just bought this and I just want to give this to your daughter and I was like are you kidding <laughs> okay I said you know thank you that's so kind of you and it was just so sweet and um yeah that's how things have gone pretty much ever since then like she will go we will order pizza at the local pizza shop that we go to and she will go with her dad to pick it up and you know like we we have the kid you know the kids wearing well my my son's almost there but my daughter you know we have her wearing her mask everywhere she goes indoors same as we do and so as soon as like she goes in like they always give her like a free bag of potato chips like because <laughs> that's what they have there like you know for the kids that come in during school hours for a slice of pizza or whatever she always comes home with a bag of chips um when she went to like we have a local Chinese restaurant. It's a, it's a large chain called Mandarin. And sometimes we order takeout from there. And one day she came back with like a panda stuffed animal. Um, like I just don't even, you know, understand it. Like, and she doesn't ask for any of this stuff. It's just people just give it to her. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, that's my kid lit. All right, so I'm happy with that page. That's cute. Okay another signature down um let me show you this oh wait hold on this is a big journal another of the big puzzle journals this is the snail one so <clears throat> i'm just kind of one by one going through the signatures so this is a middle the middle signature because i'm putting the flower trim ones in the middle after i get all the pages done you know like this stage the next stage will probably be going through and adding more things to the sides like laces and tabs and things i won't do charms till the end if i decide to do charms i have another one of these pages these are challenging pages like i liked the um the design of the pages but i'm not hugely in love with how much work they are <laughs> though i do like using these as side tucks that's one thing that's making it easier but i think the way to go about it is because i'm creating these um side tucks i'll just do like nice glue downs look at that image isn't that beautiful so cute i loved this book when i found it it's just like a history of our family kind of book um that you see in a lot of thrift stores like same as baby books just like talking about your history okay so this is another page i need to do stuff on so where do i have fussy cuts are they in here or are they in my separate bag well i've got a few in here for sure there's a big one that might be cool and then I could do um, like a floral underneath well, 
that one. We're getting there. Slowly but surely, I will find everything I need here. But this one... Nope, wrong shape. I don't want her to be stepping on the bee. Although, could she go to the bottom and then the bee... No, that's too covered. I kind of like her at the top anyways. We have a mushroom. That could be cute. Yeah, let's do that. <clears throat> and then I just need a little bit of collage kind of material. Oops, hold on. Here we go. I'm just dropping my ephemera basket here. Just a little bit of collage type fodder for in behind. This is like cute. It's like a really old page from a garden magazine. It's like garden design plan. And that might be a nice color. Um, but first I want to ink around her. Maybe with salvage patina. I think I would like that with the red color. This is um, a fairy from it Capilli Imager Imagerium or Imaginarium on uh, Etsy. And they have amazing paper dolls. Let's do some oxide here. Maybe even do like a little on top. And then move this out of the way for a moment. Just grab. I'm using this old like <clears throat> TV repair book. <laughs> it has all these great old illustrations in it, but I, I've already taken so many out of it that I'm not like worrying too much about kind of wasting some. I'm gonna spray this with water rather than coffee. I usually spray it with coffee, but <clears throat> I'm just going to go water. Just give it a moment to kind of set up. Okay, now yeah, we're starting to see some changes. It's good. Let me dry it here. Using the heat gun this morning, I'm thinking about the video I watched last night. So, <clears throat> I'm a big fan of Anne Reardon, um, her YouTube channel. She does like cooking, um, cooking content, but because she's like a chef, but also she does a lot of de debunking like internet hacks that are, you know, especially those that are really dangerous, like because um, you get all these very junky kind of channels that make YouTube channels like anything from crafting like five minute crafts to like um I'm trying to think like yummy like the, the food type channels right so a lot of those are really really bad because they actually like make people believe that you know you can make or or do what they're doing in the video even though it's totally fake like they faked the whole thing um and you know the problem with that is sometimes it's extremely dangerous the hacks that they do so she was talking about like she does a lot of you know like food hack ones where like they say you know oh, you can like one of the examples last night was how you can cook a whole breakfast in your toaster like you could put obviously the toast but then you could also put like a line of sausages and then like um you know you could weave bacon together and stick it down the toaster and then you could take tin foil and put eggs inside and then put that in the toaster so you know she went through all the problems with this like number one you know toaster 
manuals will tell you, first of all, don't ever put tin foil in your toaster. It's dangerous and can cause electrical problem. And, you know, the other one thing is like, <laughs> you know, you're not going to um, want to put, um, what's, it, what's it called? Um, you know, sausages and other meat in your toaster. Like, yes, you could cook it that way, but it's going to take forever. And like, you're going to have to keep popping the toaster down a bunch of times and the toaster's probably going to overheat, which is another danger concern. Um, and then also like, why, right? Just why? It's so easy to just cook these things the right way. <laughs> it's not faster. It's slower to do it this way. So, you know, she goes through a lot of stuff like that to kind of prevent people frustration where you know someone will show a video of putting like milk and eggs you know one like one cup of milk and eggs and a bar of chocolate in a bowl in the microwave and then it comes out looking like a cake or something right she does a lot of debunking of the ridiculous because the sad thing is and and she broke this down in her video last night that's called like um 34 deaths the most dangerous hacks or something she broke it down in her video last night like the analytics behind how people you know, when they see something, like you see it in a video, you believe it's real, right? Um, like just the, um, the way that that impacts people in general. So, you know, she, she's trying to combat that and she actually like, you know, wrote to YouTube because on YouTube's Facebook channel, they actually shared that video of this girl putting all this stuff in her toaster. And like, you know, she illuminated how, they make a lot of money off of this kind of thing too and that's a problem right we don't want people doing dangerous hacks like and hurting themselves or burning down their houses so <clears throat> the big hack she covered the one about the 34 deaths was something called um fractal wood burning oh my goodness it's so scary and i'd seen it i think like in an instagram or tiktok short but i didn't really look into how it was done i was just like oh that's cool whatever and i moved on but like oh my goodness so i guess a lot of people were really taken by the effect so it's like you know a piece of wood and imagine like a lightning like lightning bolts like fractally it looks like a tree kind of tree branches right in the wood so you know understandable how that's an attractive thing um but like oh my gosh it has been the reason that 34 people have died so what they do essentially is you know you've got a power outlet then they deconstruct a microwave and they um they take the transformer out of the microwave and that's the middle conductor basically is this microwave transformer which on its own is terrifying so you've got um an electrical outlet that's you know 120 or 240 volts then you have a microwave transformer in the middle and you know she demonstrates basically how the electrical loops work so on the side like this side where you're plugged into your 240 maximum volt um outlet you know the electricity has a couple of loops to do to complete the circuit but you know on the other side where you've now put this microwave transformer in the middle it has a lot more loops and it's basically making the voltage go to 2000 volts so that's 10 times what the human heart um needs to be restarted like you're or stopped you know so it's like the electrical um pulsation of your heart is stopped you know um at 200 so it's you know 10 times that so or, or less than 200 uh, yeah don't don't quote me on that but anyways 2000 is 10 times more than what you need to kill yourself basically um so basically a lot of people have done this and the mistakes that they've made are you know um so on the other side i should mention on the other side of the the microwave transformer you then have um cables that are connecting to what people seem to use most are like um those um for jumping your car jumper cables those two kind of alligator clips that have rubberized handles and they um you know they have like metal alligator clips then you clip that to a wet wooden cutting board um or no you don't clip it to it sorry no you don't uh, let me let me back up so you don't you have a wooden cutting board 
um, and you get it wet, then inside those alligator clips, you put these two, you just get like two pieces of metal, like a metal rod, like anything like a metal skewer, like a, you know, a metal length of something. And then that's what you touch to the wood to make this fractal effect. But like, you know, there's videos of people doing this on YouTube. Um, and like they're literally holding on to this thing with their their bare hands and like you know how the rubber on those jumper cables is really like it's it's kind of like a sleeve like it could fall off they wear out over time whatever so i can totally understand how a lot of people have been electrocuted in this way um most recently like the case that she covered was a couple who died and then their house burnt down from doing this so you know if someone's getting electrocuted you don't touch them because they are now a conductor of electricity like anything else the metal um water um the wood all conductors the person <laughs> so yeah like they the the wife i guess touched the husband so they were both electrocuted immediately like these people are dead before they hit the ground it's it's automatic and then it caught fire because no one was tending to it and their house burned down so ugh, just absolutely scary and you know this is the thing about like I, I guess that there are other like places online I don't know she, she mentioned something I won't I, you can watch her video please watch her video it's really good um but she talks about how a lot of places don't post any information about how to do this except to say don't do it so yeah don't do it please because oh my gosh there's just um there's so many things that can go wrong in that scenario but the scariest part to me is using a microwave transformer I'm like why so let's dry this here. This doesn't take too long. It's just acrylic paint. It is um, Delta Ceram Coat paint. And I really like this paint because um, it's opaque completely. It even says opaque on it and um, it dries pretty quick. And I use it to just cover all of the words that I don't want showing as well as anything like that statue of whomever, probably a problematic figure in history. Um, we'll just get rid of them. And it makes this beautiful blue, you know, writing space. And I use a lot of blue and green, mainly because it's like grass and sky. And it kind of goes with like every theme that you could work with in journals. A little bit wet up here. Then I'm just going to take a piece of my, my glue book here and just kind of smooth it over, check it to see do we have any, you know, wet spots. Because what stays wet is um, if you've got a little bit of thicker paint somewhere, it creates like a bubble. Oh, I think we're mostly good. We got a little bit. Let's just wipe down. Yep, we're good. It was right there. That's where it was. Let's just hit that one more time. now we have this side now this I think I'll try to cover with um pockets and things I need to wipe this this is getting a little loopy sorry cleanup time time to refill your tea or coffee or whatever you may be drinking all right, here we go. And I'll also give my hands a little wipe <laughs> while we're here until I can get up and wash them in the work sink. And then I'll just take one of these tissues and just kind of go over it with this. There we go. Okay non-sticky and clean work surface all right now let's find some pockets and such from this big bin and the pockets are at the back here so what do i have
Mm. Almost, but not quite. I need more stuff that's like sideways. I need to make a ton of pockets and things, I think. I um, definitely have work to do on ephemera. But this is the good stage where I can kind of see what I need because I've organized my ephemera now and I... Yeah, that's good. I use that one there and I'll probably put something behind it. Now I need just kind of a more regular pocket at the bottom. That's cute. And I'm trying to draw from like of all the different kinds of ephemera that I made, be it from book pages, I'm trying to draw from like different different styles, different sources of my ephemera because I need to spread everything out across these journals and make sure that you know I'm not using all of like the Sicily Mary Barker or whatever, you know, in one in one spot. Now I'm thinking this, I want to maybe put it on some kind of other paper. It's kind of a... Yeah, that would go. So let's glue that on there and then I'll leave enough space I can tear around. like a background page from a shabby dabby doodah kit digital. And I'm just going to tear. give it a little more color. Now I need to make, I think I'll just trim it at this edge here, but we don't need all that extra. There we go. And then I'll probably just use a little, um, maybe vintage photo ink around the edges on this. Or maybe green. Let's go, yeah, let's go with this green. This is mowed lawn. It's such a nice green. I'm also trying to finish watching Stranger Things, the new season on Netflix. It's so great. I love that show so much. It's so fun and nostalgic and scary and cute and all these things. I just love it. I love the actors. They're so great. Um, but yeah, I have to watch it like early in the morning before my kidlets get up. I want to do that as a pocket. Obviously it would open like a belly band. So if I do want something to stick through it, it can. But yeah, I've been trying to watch it. I think I'm on like the second last episode. So hopefully soon I will watch it all. And then I guess they've broken it up into like two half seasons. So we'll have to wait until I think mid July for the rest. All right, there's that page done. Okay. I like these coloring book pages. I'm leaving them in with the concept of like, I think people can you know, if you want to color or paint those in, you can, but I may, I may put pockets or something on some of them. Okay, so this needs to go, we have two pieces of that, we don't, we don't need the one. This needs to get covered on at least one side. And then, yeah, both sides, okay. So we need something to cover that up. And I think I want to use this paper. It's so nice. It's vintage gift wrap paper. I have a couple of really nice floral ones that I've been hoarding and decided let's use them in the fairy journals because they're just really beautiful and they'll make great backgrounds. And 
and they're floral, so you can't really beat that. It's great. So we'll just cover up this whole back page of the like information about the book that we don't care about. And then just trim the excess here. This is a Wendy Froud image. Another little press down. Okay, now we are done with this signature as well. So I think that that is good for now for this video. Um, I'll be back. I'm probably going to be doing another one of these videos because I have a couple more of these journals to finish. Um, I'll see where I am when I get to the, the opportunity to do my next video. Thank you for hanging out with me. Don't forget to subscribe and I will talk to you again very soon. You can find all my social media down below in the description box. Talk soon. Bye-bye.